everybody welcome to my studio it's almost September which means it's almost springtime uh, the temperatures are going up I only have two layers on now instead of my winter four so I am feeling physically and mentally lighter um, I hate winter so um, I'm really really looking forward to the spring I don't know about you but I've just not been inspired at all over the last few months I'm not sure if it was lockdown or just the winter temperatures um, but I'm really hoping that in the next few weeks I'll feel more like doing something different and something interesting. So I hope you enjoy the vlog for the month. We've got lots of information and uh, hopefully things that are useful to you and will make your quilting journey that much more pleasurable. Um, we've got a new queen of the month and we also have a promotion running on all our backing fabrics. So if you order online and use the voucher code then you can get discount on all of our backings. So I hope you enjoy it and let us know if there's anything that you'd like us to cover or just show us what quilts you've been doing. We'd love to see. Hi friends. It is the 1st of September. It is a typical 1st of September which is supposed to be spring, but it feels like one of our midwinter days, uh, as we've been used to for years and years and years. I remember going to school in primary school, and we were allowed to dress in civvies for spring day, and um, the weather would look like this. And you have to dress up in winter warmies just to get through the day. So welcome to spring. <laughs> now, I have a confession to make today. I do often do edge to edge all over quilting but I do not know how a panto works. <laughs> I can't really explain it to you. I've never worked with a panto. I know it operates from the back of your machine and I don't have access to the back of my machine. It's against the wall. So I do my all overs from the front and most of the time I do them as a freehand design that you just make a bit bigger and fill the area. Am I most favorite one obviously is a feather full but sometimes we need to do something else and sometimes our confidence aren't where it needs to be in order to just do a freehand design so i want to show you a tip where you can do all over work with the assistance of stencils so i've got a couple of stencils here in my hand there's a beautiful butterfly look at this cute little plane for like a baby quilt or a kitty's quilt flowers, hearts, and you can basically use any size stencil. Those ones I've just shown you are the five inch stencils. Um, I've pulled a couple of eight inch stencils. Some of these you'll see are a standalone design. So they, are, they aren't designed to show you the direct path in order to continuous line quilt them. And I'll show you the images and how I operate um, using those but we do have designs like this one which is already a continuous line with a starting point and an end point and you simply need to place the design right next to each other pounds and stitch and I'll show that to you on the drawings as well but what do you do with the design that for instance this one if this is a stencil you have Maybe you don't have access to anything right now, or uh, maybe you um, need to buy some more stencils. But in the meantime, to get you going, how do you use a standalone stencil like this to create an all over design that you can quilt from the front of your machine or your domestic or sit down long arm quilter? So I will be showing you in the next section um sketches that i've done and remember they sketches and drawings i usually draw on my phone so they aren't perfect but it's to show you how to achieve that design full
So to make your quilt, what do you need? You need three layers, right? So you've got your quilt top, you need a backing fabric, and you need batting. So let's first look at the backing fabric. A lot of people think, oh, I don't like this fabric, I'm going to put it on the back. So they put an ugly fabric on the back of a beautiful quilt. I don't go that way. I always try to choose something that I like, a pretty fabric, something that's nice to go on the back of my quilt. I want to be proud of both sides of it, not want to hide one side. Um, top tip in my life for um, quilts and for backing fabric specifically is to choose something that is busy. A busy print, okay? So look at this one. I've got a fabric on the back here that has pattern, it's got color, it's interesting, um, but most importantly, it allows the, the quilting to blend into it. So if I have wobbles in my quilting, which I think are going to happen when you're a beginner for sure, and it even happens when you've got a bit more experience like me, a busy fabric is going to hide those wobbles. All right. If you go with a backing that is plain, like this one, I don't know how well you can see, but you're going to see every little wobble and every little imperfection on a plain fabric. Everything is on show. I made a whole cloth quilt called Hide and Seek where I had exactly the same um, cotton sateen fabric on the front as on the back. There is nowhere to hide. That's why I called it hide and seek. Okay, so as a beginner and as any level of quilter actually, I would recommend you use a busy fabric for your backing. Use something with a pattern. It's going to be so much kinder. Um, in terms of the actual fabric, I personally prefer 100% cotton. Um, then it matches what I've used in my quilt top. You can use cotton percale, so those are sort of the 100% cotton sheeting. Just remember if you do that, they tend to have very high thread counts. Um, so your th the threads are woven very tightly together, much more so than in a um, quilting fabric. So there you may end up with some issues with your tension and thread shredding and that kind of thing because of those tightly woven fabrics. So if you refer to the needle section, I recommend that you go with a bigger needle and with a ballpoint needle. Um, if you do use those fabrics. 100% cotton is always the best for me. You can go with um, cotton poly, polyester cotton sheeting. Uh, my experience is that it doesn't last very long um, or as long and it tends to fade. Um, but we all have a budget and every quilt has a purpose as well, doesn't it? So if it's going to be for the dog bed, then you don't need to put 100% cotton. Um, if it's an heirloom, something that you want to last for generations, then go with good quality, 100% cotton. I have in the past also used fleece and the minkies. Those are really nice quality fleeces. Uh, they are a bit stretchy, um, so they can be a little trickier to quilt with, but yes, you can use those. Um, and the same with the brush cotton, the winter sheeting, you can use those too. My advice, as with all my fabrics, I always wash my backings before I put them into the quilt. So I wash all my piecing tops that I use in the piecing as well. Um, one, to make sure that I've got rid of any color bleed. I've had a few experiences with color bleed, so I always wash for that reason. But also wash to pre-shrink, um, because you make your quilt, if it's unwashed, the first time you wash it, it is going to, to shrink a little bit. So I make sure that my top fabrics and my backing fabrics are treated the same. They would both be washed and ironed and sorted. That way, when it is washed, it shrinks at an even rate rather than one shrinking more than the other. Remember as well, always to have four to six inches more backing and batting than you have your quilt top. So you want to ring around the edge of your quilt of extra backing and batting fabric. The edges of your quilt are always the most difficult to quilt. If they're on a frame, it's the wobbliest bit. And if you're trying to move your quilt under the frame, it's also the most difficult because you've got nothing to hold on to. So if you give yourself that extra four to six inches on the edge of your quilt, 
it means where you're actually quilting and it's important, it's away from the edge. So it's slightly more stable, it's easier to quilt. We all understand fabric is expensive um, and you don't really want to um, waste fabric, but we all know how to put scraps to use. So I really highly recommend that you put at least four to six inches extra on all four sides of your quilt. It's going to make life so much easier for you when you're quilting. So for our technical tip this month, we're going to tell you a little bit more about your bobbin case. Um, we have a, often people ask us about tension. They feel like they're quilting along and the tension was set beautifully and halfway through the row or halfway through the quilt, they find the bobbin tension has changed and it's no longer as good. So number one thing that you always have to do is just check how clean your bobbin case is. So the check spring at the back of it, make sure that it's clean behind that. If you've taken that check spring out, make sure you've put it back correctly. We have covered those things in previous blogs, so you can just go back in and review those videos if you're not sure. Check that there's no lint under the spring on the side here where your thread goes under. That actually adds the tension to your thread. So if there's too much lint or uh, dirt under there, it changes how much pressure the little plate applies to the thread. So check those things. If that doesn't seem to have made any difference, <clears throat> think, do you have tiles? So most of our houses in South Africa, they have tiled floors or wooden floors, not carpet. So if you've dropped this little guy on the floor, and yes, it happens really easy. It just jumps out of your hand, doesn't it? It has a life of its own and before you know it, it's on the floor. It could well be that you have deformed the bobbin case by dropping it. <clears throat> but all is not lost. A new bobbin case is quite an expensive item, but it's a hard working item. So it's really worth having good bobbin cases. But you can also reshape this one. We have a little tool here called a bobbin de-warper from Jamie Wallen um, and you can use that. You put a little bit of oil in your bobbin case and you just insert your bobbin case onto that de-warper. It is precision um, ground to the right size for an M bobbin case um, so you can actually use it to reform very gently and very carefully the shape of your bobbin case if it is out of shape. This one <clears throat> is fine, it's a new one so it goes on very easily but if you do have a bent bobbin case then this little gadget can save you quite a bit of money. I'm going to post another video underneath of Jamie explaining exactly how you use it um, and if you want one we have them available in the online shop. Um, so just have a look under there. It will be in the Notion section, I think, or it could be in the machine accessories. I will just double check and put a note for you on the video. <laughs>